divine seekers of esoteric information. So today's reading would be for those of you who feel the need to rediscover their light side, who feel kind of lost on their journey. And I believe most of you, or at least many, um, would relate to being a star seed or an earth angel or an indigo crystal rainbow child i know that these labels don't really matter but i just believe that many of you will associate with them for the sake of feeling like you belong so i um i was really inspired by my own journey to do this reading because I have felt the need to reconnect and rediscover my light because I've been doing a lot of shadow work and sometimes this is usually good but sometimes when you engage too much with your shadow self it can become unhealthy so let's see how you can bounce back on your light journey, on your ascension journey, um, what guidance your spirit guides, your star seed guides, your your loved ones want to bring to you. Um, this is group number one, two, and three, as you can see. Um, it's interesting what I did here because I pulled out cards, and then without looking at the cards, I did these that indicate the groups these are self-made cards and uh, and at the back of them you can uh, see my automatic writing uh, through which i channeled specific more detailed information uh, for some of you so pick a card and <laughs> let's begin of course i will start with group number one and i will put this aside Okay, group number one, welcome to your reading. Let's see what advice and what messages are coming through for you. I will leave this card behind. Um, I will read it at the end of the reading so I can relate the automatic writing to these cards. Okay. Wow, okay, this is beautiful. Queen of Cups, or in this particular deck, the card is called Mother of Cups. The Lovers. <laughs> beautiful card. Eight of Wands. You guys, these are already such beautiful cards that contain a lot of light attributes. King of Pentacles or Father of Stones and father of wands or king of wands wow okay um it's interesting because um right away the two kings caught my attention because we have the lovers we have one queen and then two kings i think that maybe for a particular group of you you are on a soulmate journey and you discover your light self, um, your light worker gifts, and perhaps even spirituality in general through a love connection. I don't believe that this is a love triangle, tri triangle, <laughs> I'm sorry, although it could be, um, and you could be forced to make a choice between two people one is very um spiritual um awakened one is very very intelligent you can talk about very philosophical philosophical <laughs> excuse me philosophical stuff while the other one is very grounded they they make you kind of you know, realize that this reality, although we love, we love to pull in five dimensional energies into uh, our 3D reality, 
we still are living in a physical world, in a physical plane of existence, and we are meant to, whether we want or not, engage with physicality, um, which is very often overlooked in the spiritual community. Um, Okay, I'm hearing sensuality, so embrace your sensuality, embrace your femininity. This queen of cups, this mother of cups, the motherhood to me doesn't this doesn't necessarily talk about children in here. I don't get the sense of you having potentially having a child in the future. Um, I think that this is about embracing your femininity um, in a relationship. Maybe very often you have found yourself being the <laughs> leading person, the alpha energy in the relationship, the more dominant energy, um, and you didn't get to explore your feminine side, and I think that this is important. Oh, um, okay, so, wow, <laughs> my light went out. I will take this as a confirmation that that was an yes. <laughs> okay, so you didn't get to explore your feminine side and I think that this contributed to the development of a wound, a wound feminine, a wounded feminine, a feminine that couldn't express her femininity and her sensuality in a healthy way in her relationship. Um, I think that it's time to... Um, be sensual, explore, there is nothing bad about it, but just be careful, uh, you need to pick high vibrational partners, um, and what else, the lovers as well could be parents, um, so maybe um, you see how the dynamic between your parents in their relationship is reflected now in your relationship. And this is a very, um, very frequent um, situation that happens in people's lives because we pick up on, we learn from our parents, we pick up on their behaviors, how they choose things, and we unconsciously sometimes are very often the... the um, the girls are attracted to men who resemble their fathers and the sons, the, the boys, they are attracted to girls who resemble their mother. And there is nothing impure about it. This is just psychological um, situation here. Um, well, okay. I just really believe that when you meet someone who is very spiritual who is very on the same wavelength as you, he will cause an awakening. Maybe you're about to meet your twin flame or soulmate. Um, I think that there is traveling here, there is communication. The path is kind of clearing out. I feel like you already can see where the light will come through, how you will find it. Um, so <clears throat> even if you feel kind of lost, I believe that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and you have hope. Um, spirituality can really help you get through through the problems to deal with the shadow. But again, don't don't overindulge in spirituality. I think that you're meant to be a, to be more free spirited about the information that you learn. So if you learn about twin flames, don't obsess about it. If you learn about how to deal with your shadow, don't obsess about it. Just uh, have a more lighted, light-hearted approach towards life and this will help you see your path clearer. Um, and also I believe that there is a soulmate coming through really strong that they will help you see the light within you you have a mission together because guys you cannot ignore the lovers and eight of wands which is sagittarius and mercury and this is quick 
quick communication, traveling, meeting new people, exploring new cultures, um, expressing yourself. And this is very fast energy with the lovers and the two kings. I just believe that... I mean, you, you look at the king of um, stones and wands and this is passion grounded. This is someone who is passionate but stable. They, they are passionate but about one person. So when you meet, they will be very loyal to you. Because king of wands with this Sagittarius energy sometimes can be kind of, you know, they want to explore relationships and they may hurt you in this way. You may find yourself in a third party situation, but I don't think that's the case. And even if it is, I believe that you will be the one who has to make the decision between two partners and who is the right one for you. The one who's more spiritual, philosophical, you have the deep conversation with, or the one who is grounded, makes you follow your purpose, um, who pushes you uh, onto your life path at mission, etc, etc. So let's see the, what the automatic writing can say about these things, how it can relate. Oh, wow. Okay, you guys. So um, I hope you can see. So I drew a house. Um, I am an artistic person. I'm into illustration. That's why the house is not very pretty, but it's it was my creativity unleashed. Um, I drew a house which is connected with childhood, home, um, number six. So we we have the word secret, a triang triangle. Okay, I said, if you find yourself in a third party situation, it's very likely to be you the one who would have to make the decision between between two people. So I don't think you should worry about that. Uh, so yeah, childhood, this spiral over here, we have pattern, I've written down under the spiral, we have open the door, wow, um, the beauty lies within, and steps, okay, so, so as I said, uh, you may be attracting a dynamic in your relationships, very similar to your parents, um, and... Yeah, I think that you've been a very observant child, a very emotional one with this Queen of Cups. Maybe you had a strong connection with um, your mom. With number six, this is re-evaluating your ideals, what a relationship should look like. Number, okay, oh my God, number six is also the lovers, you guys. This, um, maybe you're afraid, okay, maybe you're afraid to build a home uh, with somebody and this is how your shadow self, uh, and this is something that really is reflected in your shadow self, in your shadowy aspect, is that you run away from commitment. Um, with these steps here, yeah, you definitely run away. Uh, maybe when things get too serious, you shut the door. So someone is saying to you, open the door. The soulmate wants you to be open about the possibilities. Um, the beauty lies within. Okay, maybe um, you didn't feel appreciated when you were a kid. And maybe you were even... Um, people told you that you're not beautiful enough or you felt like you're not beautiful enough for some reason and that's why you may as well push away partners or potential partners um we have oh yeah i drew i drew um these angel wings with green color so um maybe some angel wants to connect with you to help you work on your heart chakra with self-love um, self-acceptance, the beauty lies within. Uh, you should start pay, pay more attention to your inner qualities. You know, the Queen of Cups, she, um, there is an eye here. You should look within and not outside of yourself because everything that's inside of you is, uh, is going to manifest the outer experience, the outer world. And also, 
um, you, how you feel about yourself, you will project that onto uh, your potential partners. And maybe sometimes you feel like, oh, they don't love me. They don't see me uh, as beautiful as I wish they would. But that's just your perception. Don't run away from a relationship. Relationships, that's a pattern of yours. Um, and I think that you've been maybe an extroverted kid and you got more introverted um, with time passing by or vice versa. So if, it, if that's the case, that's why you're supposed to open the door, open up yourself to opportunities to communicate with people, meet new people and potentially meet your soulmate because this soulmate really wants to enter your life, your home to you. Maybe you like to say home, your home is your sacred space, it's your comfort zone and the soulmate wants to come inside and maybe you don't like that and that's why you push them away. But in actuality, they just want to bring more peace and love and um, I think that they will help you heal this childhood traumas that you may have. Um, secrets, I believe that maybe your parents cheated, that there was a cheating or something like that or secrets, maybe they didn't tell you stuff, maybe there were problems that you didn't know about and that's why you felt betrayed um, or maybe you were very secretive. So yeah, as I said, you were either extroverted and then became an introvert or you were very extroverted in the past um, and, and really suffered from that you kind of people just didn't accept this openness and you shut down you started keeping everything every emotion in secret you started to bottle up things um and if you were introverted and then became an extrovert then it means that you used to be very secretive very observant but very secretive and with time passing by now you're open and you want to communicate and the fact that you have this trauma that makes you run away from relationships and possibilities in life and change um, and opportunities makes you feel stuck as if you're as if you're um, living in a cycle in a vicious cycle repeating the same pattern of you know um, you're being, um, you're extroverted, but you're now afraid to, you're just kind of afraid to embrace the side of yourself. So yeah, whatever, whatever resonates with you, because I can really see how for some of you, it's going to be the first, uh, situation that I explained and for others, it's going to be the second. And with this crystal, we have clarity. As I said, I think that you're going to see and maybe you're already seeing how the path is going to um, is going to open up to you. I think that you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I think that the soulmate as well will, will bring clarity. This is clear quartz. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this is called or mountain crystal. I'm really not sure. However. It's about clarity, seeing things clearer. Maybe, yeah, you will gain more clarity about the connection. Maybe you will realize this connection um, is more important than you thought it is. So, yeah, that's what I get for you guys. Uh, that was very quick, but because I feel like um, you're kind of coming out of this. Um, just start loving yourself, nurturing yourself in order to break the pattern okay so let's move on to group number two <clears throat> hello group number two this is your reading this is your guidance how to find your light self um your light aspect if you've been overly engaging or overly aware of your shadow self and you're kind of feeling stuck this is uh supposed to guide you out of it out of the darkness okay so um this is the card that i did the automatic intuitive writing on and we will um discuss it later after i read these so we can connect the messages okay okay um 
Son of Wands or Page of Wands. Or maybe Knight of Wands. I'm not really sure actually. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I will just read the energy. The label doesn't really matter. So, Seven of Swords. Six of Swords. Okay, interesting. The Universe. Completion. Um, the Strength card. Okay, two Major Arcanas for now. And Ace of Cups. Oh, okay, so I think that there is something that you're expecting and waiting for during spring, maybe some event that you feel like would be very liberating, very entertaining. You, it will be filled with uh, a very pleasing, aesthetically pleasing, pleasing experience, an experience that will nurture the senses. Maybe you will go out, um, see a different country, you will go out with people and eat really good food, something in spring, just some change in spring that will make you feel liberated, as if you're free, as if you can take a, take a breath finally, because we have this very suffocating card, um, which is seven of swords and six of swords, okay, so these two together, I believe that what causes you to feel like your shadow is very present and you're stuck and you want to overcome the darkness but you're kind of unable to it's maybe you're overindulging in information a lot and a lot of information um and this is usually good but your mind is so overly active that you're overthinking and this is make you feel depressed maybe you're overthinking about the future and you're not letting yourself enjoy the moment and this is causing you a lot of stress i think that you're not supposed to be in this dark cycle or dark night of the soul if you want to call it that you're not supposed to be in it but you're causing it yourself hmm, for what purposes well well, you are really, um, as I said, reading a lot, maybe um, just learning a lot of new things, but maybe you're just indulging in information and that's your way to escape reality, but it's not healthy because your mind gets, um, gets um, filled with all the data and it's as if there is no more space in your memory card, if I can see that, okay? Um, so you should let yourself breathe. You should let yourself loosen up a little bit. You should let yourself enjoy some other activity. And I think that taking a walk in nature would be very, very helpful. Um, maybe maybe winter, um, because where I live, it's winter, I don't know where you live, but if the weather is cold and you stay inside a lot, maybe this kind of also makes you depressed um, and anxious and maybe you should just go out with friends, even if you go out to a coffee, just go out, leave the house. Mm. Okay. Okay. You are learning to appreciate the life that you're living right now. So maybe you're a very uh, futuristic person who really has, because we have Aquarius, you have this idea about the future and what it should look like, the ideas, and then you're like, but that's not my reality. And uh, maybe you're doing a lot of reality checks, like I'm not living the, the life that I want to, that I know that I'm supposed to. Maybe you feel like you're neglecting your soul mission. This is also, you don't want to waste time. I'm hearing FOMO, fear, fear of missing out. Um, but let me tell you something. Becoming the genius, the smartest person in the world, is not necessarily the most productive thing that you can do. Overworking yourself is not the most productive thing that you can do. Whether you believe it or not, it's a fact. I can tell you that by personal experience. 
Um, so yeah, you, maybe you're so afraid that you won't live the life you're, you're dreaming of. Um, and that's why you're trying to always do something, always engage your mind. Um, there is a lot of stimulation around your head because look at him. He has um, the chakras around their head, which are, people don't usually talk about because they're not part of the seven chakras. Um, stimulated, but I don't think that this is a good in a good way, a stimulation that's good for you. Um, I think that your mind just needs to rest. I think that you just need to watch a movie, go out with friends, just stop being productive for a second. In spring, there is this new beginning. You'll be filled up with energy. You will continue with your projects. Just let yourself rest uh, as well. Um, you know, dissecting every detail of your life, scheduling everything, uh, making plans, to-do lists, that's not necessarily always the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, so we have the universe and the strength card. Okay, you don't really trust the guidance that you receive. You don't really seek information from within and that's a problem because I believe that you have the ability to activate these higher chakras around the crown and the third eye and the throat chakra. I believe that you're supposed to channel information. We have a lot of Aquarius, so you may be very... Um, you may relate to star seed information or you may feel like you have the mission to innovate the world. But because you engage with so much information, maybe you stay too much, uh, you use too much technology and you engage in, with so much information that you cannot receive your innate information, the, the information that comes from within, from your own spirit, from your own being. Um, there is so much more strength in that. There is so much more accuracy in that. Um, the the girl on the, that's sitting on the lion, she's holding a serpent. You're meant to awaken your, your Kundalini and maybe that's why you feel lost. You're neglecting your soul. You're neglecting spirit and you're engaging more with the physical reality. You're just, you know all the concepts, you understand them logically, but you don't, uh, you, you don't understand them emotionally and spiritually. So let's see what the automatic writing has to say about that. There is a lot that you're dealing with. Okay, so yeah, uh, look at the card. There is a lot that you're dealing with. We have a butterfly. We have the infinity symbol. You guys, we have it on the strength card as well. I love when this happens. I love it. We have Leo. Oh my God, I cannot believe this because I let myself utilize my gifts. I said... I'll be fearless. I don't care if the messages match. I'll just do it because I believe in my gift. And I actually, yeah, like Leo and Leo. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not bragging. I'm just happy because I always have doubts in my spiritual gifts. But it turns out that I should have more faith. And I think that that's a good important message for you as well. Have faith in your spiritual gifts. Don't neglect them. Don't seek information outside of yourself. It's so inside. So, okay, butterfly, uh, infinity symbol, the crown chakra that I talked about, the crown chakras, you guys, the Leo. So you may have Leo energy and as well Aquarius. <gasps> And do you know what I I uh, realized? Aquarius and Leo are actually opposites um, on the NATO, on the um, astrological. Oops. <laughs> okay, that was that was very graceful. On the astrological wheel, Leo and Aquarius are the opposite signs. Sides. So you want to express yourself, and you have to, and you have to channel your gifts. You have to shine, but. There is some opposition to that. The Aquarius is trying to be more logical about it. You don't know enough information. You need more information. You need to master this. This is such an Aquarian trait. You need to master it, to be different. You need to be unique in order to shine. And this very need 
makes the Leo feels insecure. It's like that's that's why Leos always like to shine because deep down they feel insecure that they are not different and unique enough. Um, but you, but they are. They really are. They carry it within them, themselves. The fear is stopping them. <gasps> Oh my god, fear is not your friend. I didn't even see that. Fear is not your friend. And we have we have dancing and we have these lines that represent movement, wind, dancing. And now I just realized, look at this person. Okay. He seems like he feels so liberated. Dance is about liberation. I can't believe the messages match perfectly the card. Oh yeah, as well. You make me come alive. We have I drew this fire. I am into illustration, so I'm very creative and I decided to express, um, to use this um, outlet of expression with automatic writing and I think that it's beautiful and I think that it will really help you guys. So the fire, so this is passion. You make me come alive. Um, and we have a spiral and you can see it in two perspectives the spiral going down or the spine going upward so okay you are meant to master your craft yes but you shouldn't obsess about it because you have the gift to shine you have the light inside of you don't doubt it you are unique you are different maybe you kind of feel sometimes you feel like people don't understand you you feel like an alien you feel like um you you just don't belong in a sense but you actually do and you will find people who will match your energy and really appreciate you uh, and who you are but you're supposed to exercise your passion and to be fearless the strength card is having no fear. She tamed the lion. And the lion, to, tamp, to uh, tame the lion, you need not only strength, you need to be fearless. You need to... It's almost as if you know that the lion is the king, right? But you're still fighting against it. You're still going to win the battle. You have so much strength, fire and potential. And we have a butterfly. You're supposed to transform from this Aquarian that just wants to learn new things. You're supposed to as well express them. Don't gather knowledge and then keep it to yourself and think, I'm so intelligent. I'm so unique. People don't understand me. Become the Leo and express your uniqueness. Because Aquarians, yes, they are different, they are unique, they are humanitarian, they are supposed to uh, bring innovations to the world, but very often they, they get stuck in their ego, which is again represented by Leo, which is interesting. They get stuck in the ego thinking they are unique and intelligent and people won't understand them anyways. So what's the point of expressing their knowledge? But actually people will understand you. People can really relate to you on an emotional level with this cup. Um, and this is a natural gift. Ace of Cups to me is natural gift, you guys. You have a natural gift and you're passionate about it, but maybe society and structure makes you feel like you can't real realize this dream, but I'm telling you that you can. You have the infinity symbol, which um, also connects to the magician. You have all the tools that you need to create. The infinity symbol to me, I don't know why, uh, is created um, relates to creation and manifestation. Maybe because maybe because in numerology number eight is um, the material world. Yes, you can create the material physical reality that you want to, but you have to be fearless about it. With the with the universe, you can create this world that you're dreaming about, but you really have to be fearless. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous reading. And uh, as well, this is um, Amethyst. So this is Crown and Third Eye Chakras. So yeah, channel your spirituality, channel all the information from within and unleash your creativity. I think that you're very creative, but you're getting stuck in the idea that you don't know enough, you're not mastered enough to start. Okay.
Okay, group number two, let's move on with group number three. So, hello, group number three. This is your reading. This is supposed to tell you how to get out of your shallow self, of your dark night of the soul, because from personal experience, I think that sometimes we need a reminder, a reminder that shows us the light inside of us because when we do shadow work that's good because we resolve trauma but we also um we can also associate too much with the shadow and we should remember that we are light beings okay so something that i channeled when i when i was doing the automatic writing on the back of this card and i was pulling these is that you're the black pearl uh, which to me represents the hidden talent, the person that nobody expected you to be a treasure. Nobody expected you to be, yeah, the treasure in their life, but you turned out to be that. And that's why I chose um, this onyx um, because it really looks like a black pearl. I mean, I don't have a black pearl, but this represents it, okay? So I will read the automatic writing card later. First, let's read these energies and then we will connect them, okay? Eight of stones or eight of pentacles, Virgo energy, creation, hard work, putting the effort in, beautiful. Okay, oh my God. <laughs> queen of stones, uh, mother of, of stones or queen of pentacles. Pentacles energy, earth energy, you may, you may be an earth sign or you're very focused on building a career right now and maybe that's why your shadow is kind of being triggered or brought to the surface. Wow, okay, interesting. In group number one we had the universe completion and now we have the multiverse um, disconnection. Um, the Emperor creating, you guys, I love this, I already love it, Five of Wands, okay, so, okay, I see, I see, I see, you want to do it all on your own, <laughs> that's what I feel like, you want to do it on your own, you feel like People don't really understand your ideas. Uh, people are not good enough to be uh, in your project. People are not creative as, as as creative as you. They are not as hardworking as you. Maybe you just want to do it all on your own because you want to control it. Maybe you're a control freak. But in fact, you need to connect. Look at this queen of pentacles. She is sitting in a meditative um, position and the center of a circle and all these stones around her are connected. To me, this is not only connecting the dots in your life, but also um, becoming the leader or leading, um, living life and being an example for other people. So you should not disconnect from society as the multiverse card suggests here. So you're disconnecting because maybe if you just I don't know, you want to control your life, right? When you allow people to become part of your project, to engage with your work, you lose this bit, tiny bit of control, but you still freak about, freak out about it. We have the emperor. So yeah, as I, as I said, um, maybe you feel like you have the strength and the ability to do it all on your own <laughs> but in actuality there are people i don't know if you can see who are holding these um pillars or whatever this is behind the emperor um so yeah um yeah the emperor is the emperor uh, because he worked hard for it, he is a builder, a creator, but he has so many people who take care of the castle, who take care of him, who help him out, who give him advices. You should be more open to that. You should be more open to advices. Um, the mother of stones here says reciprocity, acceptance, 
um, this is a, a key word on the card. So you should reciprocate, reciprocate the advices, the help. Um, yeah, you have the knowledge, but you don't have all the knowledge. Okay. So I think that <laughs> when you have, when you take all, all the work, um, you sign up for everything. You cannot um, utilize your full potential. Uh, and yeah, because I believe that very often you may be in conflict with others, with this five of wands. Um, listen, when you go against one another, you're weaker. So I think that you should find co-workers, uh, people who share the same ideas with you and create something together, togetherness, um, becoming a part of the world, um, not isolating yourself and become, becoming self-made successful. We kind of idolize uh, self-made success, but we don't realize that there is no such thing as self-made success. Yeah, self-made is coming from the bottom to the top but there are always people who will help you out mentors teachers your you know like friends who support you or maybe they don't maybe family supports you uh, i don't know but there is always someone who will show you the way who will teach you things because self-made me means that you didn't use youtube you didn't use um, Google information, you didn't read books, you didn't ask anyone for advice, you didn't use anyone's advice, you figured it out on your own. And I think that this concept of self-made is so, so vain, um, so like, it's not what it really is, and yeah, we shouldn't idolize that. What else? Yeah, okay, so when you dissociate and when you start building things on your own, it's more likely, look at this. This reminds reminds me of the tower, but it's so small. There are two towers because people are opposing each other. They are fighting against each other. They don't want to create a huge, beautiful empire together. They created small castles alone. So. Yeah, I think that you're supposed to open up yourself to people who want to help you out and give you advice. And this disconnection, this disconnection from the world, this feeling that the rules um, don't apply to you, uh, you're not influenced by society and all of that, this, this is going to work against you. You have a lot of potential because you're a hard worker. You have the ability to create, but you may be very stubborn in your ways of doing things, okay? <laughs> That's why you're the black pearl, okay? Uh, you're the black pearl because... And look at that. I mean, this is again black um, background with this... Um, the planet is in the shadow, but it's shining, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I see a visual um, connection between the messages that I'm getting and the cards. You're the black pearl because you are different from the rest, right? You're black and all the other pearls are white, and maybe people underestimated you, and that's why you said, fuck them, I'm going to do it on my own, I'm going to go against them, uh, they didn't see the, the gift that you have, but you're supposed not to go against them and prove them wrong, because this is driven by your ego, and this will only um, um, define even more your shadow, you're supposed to tell them, Listen, I know you, you may doubt me because I, I never showed my true gifts, but I'm actually very good at this, this, at this. And I can help you and you can help me too. Let's work together, okay? I'm very, very open to collaboration. You should be the one approaching people and not waiting on an invitation and then becoming... Um, 
becoming angry that you never receive it and saying, okay, then I'm too good for them. I'll do it on my own. I'll prove them wrong. You shouldn't do that because if you have this mindset, you won't bear the success that you're working for. So let's see the automatic writing and what it has to say for you. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> music. Okay, so we have music, aesthetics, past lives, number 333. Oh, okay, you guys, number three um, is the emperor. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, the emperor is number four. Uh, the empress is number three. Um, yeah, the empress, which is... She built the empire, but, but she's very receptive. She, she takes help and advice. And that's why she is, um, she is embo the embodiment of all queens. And that's why she's such a powerful energy to dwell in. Um, the Empress is receptive as the Queen of Cups, emotional, grounded and hardworking as the Queen of Pentacles ambitious and passionate as the Queen of Wands and logical and knows boundaries as the Queen of Swords, but she's also receptive as the Queen of Cups. So there is a huge balance um, in her energy. And number 333 would mean uh, exactly that, that you need to find the perfect balance um, between you, the things that you want to do and others, the three. Um, and also, this may be an angel number that you see a lot. And then we have a flower that's opening. I drew it right here. And I've written beauty, Venus, mythology, mythology, okay, and birds, and flying. Hmm, wow. <gasps> okay, I know. Okay. <laughs> so... The first thing that uh, connects with the messages that I just described, birds. Birds fly together. They look so beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. They create such a beautiful combination um, and formation, but they fly together. They work together. They collaborate, okay? Um, you're, you Maybe you don't want to hear that, but you're not supposed to be the lonely flying bird in the sky. You're supposed to be... You can still be the leader, okay? You have leadership qualities. Don't fear that. You can still be the leader. You can still have uh, the uh, leading, um, the leading um, position, the control over the project, but you're supposed to use help from others. You can still be, you know, in the center, but you're supposed to lead all other birds and they're supposed to make up, to contribute to your aesthetic creation. I think that you're very creative. You may be an artist. You may want to create something aesthetically pleasing. There is music. Maybe um, you want to be a musician and you should open up to, um, yeah, like um, opportunities. Um, if you're not good at writing lyrics, ask people to help you out. Or if you're not good at shooting videos, you should hire somebody to shoot the video for you if you want to do music. If you're an artist, you should um, ask a mentor, learn from the masters, you know, Da Vinci, um, Picasso, etc., etc. <laughs> you should just open up to um, Co collaboration and there's so much beauty with Venus. Venus is again, you guys, I channeled this so on point. Venus is again so receptive. In mythology, uh, Venus uh, is um, the equivalent to Aphrodite and they're, they're beautiful and their beauty attracts, okay? You're supposed to attract. You're, you're not supposed to push away people to do it on your own. You're supposed to be the light that attracts everyone. You're supposed to be that flower that attract, uh, attracts all the bees, right? But... Uh, because you're... Okay, so there is an opposition. Because you're the hidden pearl. Whoa, okay, that's interesting. I've drew... I, I, I drew here um, a seashell, if that's what this is called. Uh, and again, we have as well as 
when I was doing the automatic writing, I channeled the song um, from... Um, I channeled the song The Black Sea, Come come Down to the Black Sea and Swim in With Me. Um, I think that you should invite people in your space, show them your personal work to reveal the gifts and the treasure that the black pearl actually is. To reveal how your worth, okay? Don't hide it. And also I channeled um, Imagine Dragons, Birds, Birds fly in different directions. Um, so maybe your peers, maybe your friends all engage with different stuff and you feel isolated. Or maybe you see your friends doing things on their own and succeeding and you want to do the same, but you're not supposed to. You're meant to collaborate and there's so much beauty in connecting, okay? Connection will help you bring out your light attributes, group number three. And that was a very, very beautiful reading. I hope it helped you. Uh, oh, another thing with the five of wands that I got. You should be more open to other people's perspective. Please, 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 please. Uh, discuss without fighting and arguing and thinking that you are always right because this is such a Virgo thing and we have it here. Okay, that was the guidance you received. I hope it was insightful. Um, if it didn't resonate, try to check out another group. And if it did, please comment below and like this video. I was very, very happy to do the, the reading for you. So see you in my next video. Bye, guys.